personal hygiene shave like their body hair ladies first behavior manners so too many intrusive questions don't be too social so there's no smooching out here in public hey guys and girls and as Japanese it's Kathy Cat from Tokyo coming out to you now this time we're going to talk about common mistakes and errors that every boy should avoid when dealing with Japanese girls. You can seriously ruin your chances if you don't do these things. Or you can actually get some scores or some good scores or brownie points with girls if you do these things. So everyone listen up, let's talk about them. Let's go! Hajimario! Number one, personal hygiene is incredibly important. Japanese people don't smell in the positive way and in the negative way, meaning no bio whatsoever and also no strong smells of eau de cologne or Jean-Paul Gaultier, no, neither of that, which means Japanese girls pay close attention not just to your visual appearance, you can try as hard as you want, if you smell of bio, you're out of the game. It has like a really negative image. I actually know <laughs> a guy in his company, he was, you know, was not, he was famous for being the smelly foreigner and that's what you do not want to be. So if you come to Japan, be sure, <laughs> it's just like doing a report in a typhoon. <laughs> so if you come to Japan, be sure to shower daily also bring your own deodorant because Japanese deodorants don't work that well on foreigners and make sure that if you have some kind of smell you're using that it's not too strong. When you are in a train and one person, you smell some person's cologne, you know instantly that's the only foreigner on the train. Again, don't stand out from the crowd in that way. It's not a good thing. It's seen as very, very negative, even though it's like your very expensive eau de cologne. No, none of that. Also, beard, seiketsukan is a word that Japanese girls use a lot. Seiketsukan, and it's kind of like the overall cleanliness. Again, personal hygiene. Beards here in Japan are generally a no in my office all men are shaven. I've, I haven't seen a man with a beard. The director can sometimes get away with a little bit of a beard, but that's because he's an artist and he doesn't deal with customer service. Generally, any kind of customer service you'll see here in Japan, no one's wearing beards. Again, it's seen as kind of uncleansy, maybe the wild boys wear it, but generally it's a no-go. Absolute no-go. Same for you guys. You might have that sexy kind of beard going, might not be that sexy here. Maybe you can pull it off. We've done a video about that where we asked Japanese girls and they said foreigners can pull it off better, but generally it's a no. So before you grow out that beard, maybe check your face, maybe cleanly shave it. You might have better chances. So cleanliness number one. N -E -X -T. And another thing recently, there is a trend in Japan and it must be true because it's on my YouTube and it's on my Instagram and the recent trend is for guys to also shave like their body hair. I mean, girls are already doing this to an absolute extreme here in Japan. Every summer on the train there's like Datsumo commercials, which are for like hair removal clinics and stuff. And right now YouTube and Instagram in Japan is full with commercials for guys how to like shave their hair or use some certain creams to get rid, rid of their hair and how smooth their hair now is and how much girls love it now that they are very smooth. Now I'm not telling you you have to do this, this is a new trend, but yeah I'm kind of surprised about that one too. Uh, I, I keep seeing half naked guys shaving shaving their, their body hair on my Instagram feed and I'm kind of, kind of confused but hey equal rights for everyone, if the girls have to shave everything off so should the guys. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not gonna do that. I have hairy arms and I'm proud of them. I'm not proud of them. I'm really not proud of them. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Ladies first behavior or just general chivalry. Gentlemen, that I've repeated this to you guys before. I'm gonna say it again. Do your gentleman behavior because even especially as a foreign bir a bird, <laughs> It's a foreign bird. I wanted to say boy and girl at the same time. Okay, especially as a foreign boy, Japanese girls hope 
a wish that they know surely meaning you know opening up doors pulling back maybe a chair or simple things like walking on the side of the road where the cars are to protect the girl I know it's very cliche but Japanese girls don't get this here in Japan there is no culture of gentleman behavior so in most of her interviews girls said they wish Japanese boys would behave that way but they don't and they won't and that's why when they see a foreign girl boy there is kind of the the ideal that oh he might treat me like a princess or he might you know do that chival behavior and that be so happy so don't think don't match yourself with the Japanese boys and and you know ignore that do your best to play that card because that that can definitely go to your strength if you show that you treat her you know special Come on, let's be honest, every girl wants to feel special. I know that, you know, in the 21st century, when lots and lots of people are very emancipated, they don't mind that. Some girls are like, hey, I don't want him to treat me special, or like, you know, special chivalry. Some girls don't need that, but because Japanese girls haven't had that over the last decades, there is still a positive image of that type of chivalry. Chivalry, my God, this is a difficult word, here in Japan. So if you can do those little gestures, they really go a long way. You know, just take her back when she's shopping and stuff like that. You don't have to go all the way and, you know, arrive with the rose because some girls might actually, if they're very shy, might be a bit like, oh my God, I don't know what to do now. But if you do those little gestures that show that she's special to you and that you care, they go a long way, especially here in Japan. Don't ignore Japanese manners. Just because you are a foreigner doesn't mean you can ignore the manners of Japan. I know some people like to still ignore the manners and call it Gaijin Smash and do it anyways, but it's not gonna really get you points in with the girls. It just makes you look bad. So on that note, try and follow the general manners that are going on here in Japan. You know, read them up, have a look so you don't do the things, you know, don't spit on the floor, don't burp while you eat, all those common things. Don't talk too loud on the train, stuff like that. You know, we have to quite actually focused on a lot of these Japanese manners here on the Ask Japanese channel. So if you've missed them, there are so many videos. We have a whole playlist on manners here in Japan that you can check out about that. One of the manners actually that I want to focus on as well is on top of all the manners we explain, there's one we haven't explained yet, and that's bimbo yusuri. Bimbo yusuri is the act of unconsciously shaking your foot or your leg. So for example, like like this, you know, when you tap your leg a little bit like this. They call it bimbo yusuri. I hope my skirt is not flying up right now while we're focusing on my leg. I hope it didn't. Anyways, tapping your foot or shaking your leg on controller B is called bimbo yusuri. Why is it called bimbo yusuri? Usually bimbo actually means a poor person. Now in the old days, they used to say that, you know, like a beggar who's trying to shake himself, like because he's so cold. That's why they call it bimbo yusuri. And they used to say in the Edo period, if you do that, you are gonna be in poverty soon. So that's how much Japanese people don't like this. I know it's uncontrollable. For some people, it's really hard to switch it off. But apparently here, it's considered bad manners. I sometimes, you know, catch myself or catch my friends out on that. But it is apparently a part of the manners that you need to look after as well, which, uh, you know, it's unconscious for many of us. So it's hard to control this. But if you catch yourself out on it, stop it. I had actually the director tell me off about it before. <laughs> so that does happen. So there's a lot of manners here and please, please, please don't do the thing go like, I'm a foreigner, I'm gonna do them anyways. It's not good. Also be respectful to the staff. Now foreigners generally do that. Japanese boys sometimes don't because the customer here is seen as God, not King, God. And some take advantage of that and, you know, talk down to the staff who's serving them as if they are actually better than them. Japanese girls don't like that. So don't copy that behavior. If you see some Japanese boys do that, it's actually very negative. You know, the staff feels bad about it. The date feels bad about it. The only person that feels good about it is the boy who treats the other ones like less and it's just bad manners. So yeah, mind your manners. 
しばらくお待ちください By the way, asking also too many intrusive questions is also considered bad manners here in Japan. Asking too much about their age, where they live, if they really have time, if they have time tomorrow, all of that. Don't do that. It looks bad. It's too persistent. Japanese people are kind of passive and not as aggressive in certain things. So you don't want to literally overdo it and get bad points for being the persistent person. That includes, I know you want to find out about their past boyfriends and similar. In Japan, you don't really do that. So don't dig in too deep. Some people will. Feel very, very uncomfortable if you do that. So, on that note, just you know, if they don't want to tell you, let them off with it. They don't have to tell you.、Uh, hi. Don't be too social. Now, what does that mean? If you're already dating a Japanese girl, or there's you know, a Japanese girl you're kind of you know, starting to see, at that point in time, you need to be careful that you're not too friendly with other girls. Because in Japan, there is still, depending on which group of friends you have, but some people still seem to think, you know, friendship between boys and girls, nah, it's not really a thing. It always turns into something else. So if you're too nice to other girls, and even though you're just being normally nice, if she's the jealous type, she might think that you're too nice to another girl, get a bit angry, get a bit jealous. Those kind of things just balance it out nicely. You know, if you want things to go smoothly with her, don't be too friendly to other girls. Just be a little bit careful in that area. Balance it out just right. Also, maybe if she's a Japanese person who's not directly just aiming to hang out with foreigners, maybe, you know, it happens that you guys just met and you get along. Don't just hang out with other foreigners because it will make her feel, you know, a little bit estranged from the group. Maybe she'll feel like she can't quite fit in and similar things like that. Also, make sure that you hang out with her friends, try and socialize with her. And if you guys decide on one language early in your relationship, that's probably going to be the language that you guys stick with. Meaning, if you start, Getting to know each other in English, usually that's the language that sticks, but make sure that at the same time you still learn her language and show that you, you know, show an interest into her culture and, you know, all the background, her language. So, what I see a lot is that sometimes if, if, An international couple forms the first language you use with each other, sticks. That's the one that you keep using. And some people get comfortable in whichever language that is and don't continue learning the partner's language. But if you do that, you kind of both go on a much equal, more position, and it just generally balances things out. So don't just stick with that. So, again, social, but also studying. Physical matters. Now, how do Japanese people express their emotions? That is sometimes not done by physical things like touching, kissing, and stuff. It's more done by subtle words or little moments. So, for example, it might be the girl just quickly touching your arm, similar things like that. So, blatant PDA is a no in Japan. So, there's no smooching out here in public. You don't see that. The only time I see people smooching in public, that's generally foreigners who do that, or other Asian cultures that do that. Here in Tokyo, seeing Japanese people smooch in public, nah, haven't really seen that. Which is also ties to one of our videos where we ask, could you kiss your boyfriend or girlfriend in front of your parents? And everyone said no. It's just a very shy culture. They keep saying, this is something that's not. For show. So you can do kiss your partner, but you don't do it in public. So, same thing for holding hands.、Mm, it depends on, this seems to be changing recently. Sometimes people are holding hands more, especially in romantic places like Disneyland or stuff. You see couples who are holding hands, but generally all kinds of smooching, even on the cheek. No. Unfortunately, you don't see that at all. It was a bit sad. That's one of those things. But generally, you can show your affection through little symbols. I think Japanese people tend to show their affection more through the things they do. So, for example, they will go and 
see that the girl is tired, so they say, "Hey, would you like to sit down?" You know, they what? She, is she walking a little bit like she's in pain? Maybe she wore nice shoes just for the first date, and they actually hurt. Like, watch out for her. Look at the signals and signs that her body is giving you, or that she might be giving you. Read between the lines, and then act accordingly. Say, "Hey, would you like to take a break?" Or, "Hey, how about we sit down?" And then get up and get her a drink from the vending machine. Little things like that. It's a lot of picking up on the subtle hints that people are putting down instead of going all the straight out physical things. Now, <laughs> how is that with more physical things? You know what I mean? That one, you might have rules in your country, like after the third date or the fifth date or whatever. Those rules don't really apply in Japan. Really depends on the person, and since Japanese people are incredibly shy, it can take a long time until you get to certain steps. So just be prepared so that give them the extra time as well. Don't don't go in with all your your foreign expectations. And go like this is what we're gonna do now. No, take your time. You might really really make them dislike you. So you know, pick up on the subtle hints. Take your time, one step at a time. <laughs> So those were five things that foreign boys should watch out for when they want to date Japanese girls. We've talked about this before in more details in other videos. So check out some of our other videos. There's a great variety if you want to learn more about dating here in Japan. So good luck, guys and girls. I know it's not easy, but there's loads of hints here on our channel to help you out with that. On that note, guys, don't forget to subscribe and tick on the notification bell so you don't miss the future videos that we're putting out. From Tokyo here coming out to you and everyone else don't forget to leave us a like and a comment to say thanks I hope you enjoyed this video there's gonna be more stuff heading your way from Tokyo so I'll catch you soon bye